Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are taking a look at the Squire Classic Vibe Mustang. I've reviewed a fair amount of the classic vibe range from Squire. These are all made in Indonesia. I absolutely love the range and I love the 40th anniversary range even more. Quality control is sometimes a thing that isn't quite so good as I've seen with the Squire Contemporary Series P-Base as well. So I've had a real mixed bag from Squire before and I was cautious about this one going in as well because I had heard whisperings that the quality control on these Mustangs isn't so good. Oh, hello, it's Johnny from the future here. So if you've seen one of my videos before, you'll know that at this point, I normally like run through the specs a bit, talk about the knobs before going on to the sound of the bass, but I'm deciding on this video to do it slightly differently. I feel like you can find that spec sheet so many places on the internet. So click the link in the description if you want to check out the specs. For this bass in particular, I wanted to try it with flats, with rounds and with two different amp types and showcase the DI tone as well. So I'm doing something slightly differently. We're going to fast forward uh, to the tone section and get rid of all the guff at the start of the video uh, so you can just hear what it sounds like. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see my kind of full thoughts on the bass. And yeah, make sure you press that like button and subscribe. Just like all of my demos, we're going to be listening to this bass through the Line 6 HX Stomp. I actually think this bass adapts really well depending on the style of amp you have. So as well as playing with rounds and with flats, we are going to be listening to both of those with two different amps as well. We're going to do a more modern amp setup, which is a Galleon Kruger head through an Ampeg SBT 8x10 cab, and then a slightly more vintage and driven sound which is the Aguilar Tone Hammer with a 4x10 cap. Let's have a listen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
This video is sponsored by Base Bros. Base Bros is an online shop and physical showroom for all things second-hand bases. I recently visited their showroom and picked up this Music Man Stingray, which has been one of my dream bases to have in my collection. I had an amazing time there and managed to get a really good deal by part exchanging one of my old bases. You can take away the hassle and bring the price down a little bit by trading in one of your own bases. I can't speak highly enough of the service that I received, so make sure you click the link in the description to go and check them out for yourself. So there you have it. This little base actually has a lot to offer. Depending on your amp setup, it can completely change how you set this base up. I normally like to really dig in with a pick, lots of treble, scoop the mids a little bit, so lots of attack and presence. This base offers the opposite of that. I really like the more vintage sounding amps with this. Still lots of warmth coming out of those pickups, but I feel like these pickups are really good at doing that warmth subby sound. But then when you start opening up the tone, it gets a bit clangy and a bit, I don't know, but not in a good way. Uh, I feel like the, this short scale sounds best when you're dialing back the tone. I think you get a really nice sound. Just taking some of that top end out a little bit, palm muting it with a pick or playing with finger style sounds fantastic. But then if you are turning that tone down, you do have to be careful where the pots aren't so good quality. Wait, a small change can make a lot of difference when you go past the 75% mark. So that issue doesn't seem like a big one but considering my favorite sounds are in it in that kind of direction that could cause some issues but generally I just kind of put it to where I want it and then leave it. I don't really like the sound of slapping on this bass I don't really like the sound of having the tone all the way open and, and playing hard with a pick I just feel like a, a standard P bass is better for that unless you're putting lots of overdrive distortion or fuzz on top of it because i think again this bass saturates that sound really really well be warned this bass is only string through now that's great i love a string through body on a bass but you cannot string the strings through the bridge itself you oak you can only do it through the body and i say this because I was a very silly boy and just thought, hey, I'll, I'll buy some flats for this as well. I bought some Diodario Chromes flats, uh, short scale ones, and yeah, short scale flats do not fit on Mustangs. And that was my fault. I was naive to that. I didn't know. Um, but yeah, you have to get medium scale strings if you are looking at stringing up one of these. And now I, I managed to kind of get away with it with the flats that we're going to use later on. Um, but yeah, it, it's not a pretty sight and the open E just doesn't work. Sounds awful, really buzzy because of the, the thickness of the string going through the nut at that point. Definitely do your research and get some medium scale length strings or some Mustang specific strings. We've got a lacquered neck and then a Indian lull fretboard laurel is a more affordable alternative to rosewood and yeah they just they just get so dry so quickly and start to look so faded so if you're thinking about picking up one of these i would recommend using some lemon oil from dear dario to treat the neck when you're changing the strings it takes two seconds to apply some of this it really helps to rehydrate that dry neck and it feels so much nicer to play afterwards overall i think you're getting a really good package with one of these it must be said that i did pick this one up from the fender showrooms so i didn't buy this one online i feel like i need to give the caveat that because of the rumors I've heard about the bass and this quality control issue, that maybe you should try one in a shop in order to buy one instead of getting one online. I think this bass sits comfortably at its price range. I don't think it punches way beyond it, 
but I think it is good, still good value for money. I do think it is better than the Fender Player Series uh, Mustang as well. Although I think I had a bad experience with that bass, the toggle switch being bad quality, and loads of sprouting frets as well, which this bass has none of that. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about this bass and also what other short scales you'd like me to check out on this channel. I've done a few already, including the Gretsch Electromatic G2220 Junior Jet 2. Make sure you go and check out that video as well. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.